There's something mystical about Pender Harbor. It's in the jaw-dropping beauty of the Sunshine Coast. And it's in the golf course that feels homemade at times, and then expertly crafted at others. But most of all, there's a sense of place here that's difficult to put into words. A balance between golf and landscape, an authenticity that reflects the community that calls it home. Community courses like Pender Harbor are essential places in golf, fueled by a passion for the game and driven to sustain and grow it. The club has engaged a golf course architect to review the course and provide guidance on long-term planning, and the opportunity to explore the place and share its stories, even on a cold and frosty January day, was too good to pass up. It was built 30 years ago with a very limited budget and people that weren't experts at building a golf course. So I think for the most part, the riding around this golf course is really well done. It's a membership owned club, which is amazing. And the folks pitch in and, and, and that, that such, gives it such a special vibe. It's a beautiful course and, and such a nice uh, rural area. So when the opportunity presented itself, I was so happy to come back to the West Coast. It takes a lot of confidence to hit driver on the narrow first hole, especially on a cold day like this one, where off-season conditions, temporary greens, and frozen ground are sometimes in play. Did it go over? Uh, no, no sense of whether it landed <laughs> over, the, over the river or not. When you step up to the second tee, you're greeted with the most zen moment you've had in months. It really is a slice of golf heaven up here. The tee shot reminds me of Big Wind's sixth hole, with the elevation drop in particular. Except this tee shot's actually a little bit more unnerving with a stream that runs right across the fairway through the landing area. The wild thing is, the best part about this golf hole might actually be its green site. With the left to right slope, the golfer really does have to think about their shape of their shot coming to the green, especially if they're going for it in two. Sean and I have been lucky enough to play over 500 golf courses around the world but never with a reputed architect and a passionate course super. We had so many maintenance efficiency and design learnings from this day. For example, how often does a golfer think about having enough room for a mower to travel between a green site and a bunker, saving the course precious time? Oh, attaboy. That's right up the hill. Wow, there's something really visually appealing about those slopes that kind of crisscross on their way up. I don't know a hole that's this dramatic that I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. A common shot I'll refer to is the 11th of Mirrorfield for like that blind mm -hmm. tee shot you just you feel like what the hell's on the other side of this but it's certainly half the size of this if, if not a third like you yeah. know this isn't this is yeah. insane and not dramatically down after either no no and not at all so one of my uh, favorite holes is the seventh the sunning day on the old course and it and it's it's not quite this dramatic but it's blind yeah and you do you walk up the hill and then it's the most amazing green setting so it yeah. does work sometimes
What did you guys first think when you saw this hole for you three and a half years ago? Oh, it's kind of one of those things where you're kind of taken aback by how extreme the landscape is. And it's like, oh, wow, this is really interesting. How about you, Alex? I think I think from here, it's it's probably too difficult for the most. Yeah. From the middle to the, a better hole. And, it, and it's quite nice that it creates that kind of moment of anticipation. In the row. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you can, you're walking up that hill or, or driving up that hill and you're not quite sure what's the other side. So mm -hmm. it's, you get that wow moment when you get to the top of the hill. Well, when you get to the top, it's like, you take a full swing and it's like you're falling off the earth almost is that feeling you get it like yeah. a top deck of a driving range of not wanting to fall over a little yeah. bit it's kind of cool if pender harbor had as much exposure as cabot or st george's this hole might be considered in the discussion for one of the most polarizing in the country I happen to fall on the side of loving it purely because of how demanding the tee shot is if you want to be able to go for this green in two. The fifth is the first hole in a stretch of four valley holes that run relatively parallel to one another. It's a fantastic section of the property. Five is a mid-length par four, which is fairly open on the left-hand side, as I learned. And it really is all about the approach shot into the green, which is nestled into Myers Creek. I think the sixth is my favorite hole in the course, and for me it's all about the green. From the tee, the short grass to the right begs you to miss there, but when you get closer to the green you notice the mound that defends against chip shots, and that the best miss is actually short or left. At 195 yards from the very back, this hole demands one of your best shots of the day. What I love about the seventh is that the design of the green site forces the player to make a decision all the way back at the tee. The conservative tee shot up the left side of the fairway leaves the player to contend with a mound short of the green, which can interfere with run-up shots, whereas the aggressive player up the right side of the fairway has a clear view to the green. When you stand on the ninth tee at Pender Harbor, you feel like you're at Highlands Links in Cape Breton. This hole is the reason that today's episode exists. With free advertising from the Sunshine Coast Highway, the passerby catches a glimpse of the rumpled fairway on nine. It's definitely the hardest hole on the course, and it's certainly in the conversation for being the best hole out here as well. I don't know why, but we love sharing hidden gem golf course stories, and Pender Harbor is no exception. When you think of retirement, a place in nature that you can enjoy with family and friends, and has an affordable yet therapeutic golf course, sounds pretty ideal. Alan and Darlene are smart enough to set their everyday alarm clock to that exact dream. And for a moment, Alex Sean and I got a taste of their wisdom. Charlene, a little bit about uh, your background and how you landed at Pender Harbor. Well, I used to be a golf pro in Vancouver for a number of years and I married one of my students, a Newfoundlander, and off we went to Newfoundland for 15 years and uh, now I'm back here and we used to come up here and spend weekends here in golf. It's a beautiful course and, and such a nice uh, rural area so when the opportunity presented itself I was so happy to come back to the west coast. 